Well, welcome back, and we are so glad you're here. You know, our community is so strong, and it's only because you are sharing this with your friends. So please continue to do that. Now, we're going to talk about MASH. Oh, my goodness. There's so much to understand, but you don't have to know all of it. It's Let's work on the things that we can control and the things that make us more successful. I got three pots out here, and boy, we got something to cover. Well, welcome back. Okay, look, we've got all that out of the way. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. Again, that's the only recognition or credit that the channel gets. Other than that, you know, that's my way of having bragging points with the rest of that YouTube creator community. Okay? Now, um, this is, oh, this is going to be a, a wonderful one. Today. I want to give you a real quick update. Uh, first, thanks to everybody who reached, I'll tell you what, this community is super strong. And you, don't, you just don't realize how much I appreciate all the comments, all the emails, all the phone calls. Uh, they are very, very helpful regardless of the topic. But the one in particular is the one about that audible proof and trail hydrometer. You know, we've got that, I mean, here, this is my rudimentary prototype, uh, working extremely well. I can measure the millimeters. This thing is working great. And of course, that goes right on top of the Parrot. Uh, so uh, we're going to have this thing, see, it sits right there. There is a direct correlation between how high that thing floats, your proof and trail hydrometer, and what the proof is. So we can get instantaneous audible because we're trying to develop this for those who cannot see. Um, so, I, I, and I know I've got a lot of comments and a lot of descriptions and man, the, the help that's been offered is just tremendous. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Let's move on because this is just something in progress. I'm still waiting on a couple of little pieces to show up so that I can Take this to the next step, and with your help, we were gonna, we're going to get there. We did it with the Audible PID. We can do it with this. We have so many questions about MASH and the development of a grain bill. I don't want to get involved with how to weigh out poundage and, and all that stuff and your expected uh, gravity points. That's in another video already. Uh, but what I want to do is try to go through a process. And remember, we talked about this before, about there is a process, but... There are many, many techniques, and that's what's so exciting about this. Look, if you call me and you just want some free advice, huh, I'll tell you, never take a sleeping pill and a laxative at the same time. Yep, the results are, you can predict, but impossible to control. <laughs> that's my advice. But if you want some opinion or you want an answer to a question, give me a holler. Send me an email, whatever the case may be, or just comment below, and we'll get back to you. Now, um, we are, of course, I've always got the board. The board comes in handy because I think pictures speak a thousand words. Now, you know, the, the one I get most often is for the George Washington rye recipe. Um, and yes, there's, gosh, there's seven, eight, almost eight pounds of grain in there and five gallons of water. That's a lot of grain in water. And yes, the grain soaks up the water. Got you. Follow the process but just make sure you hone your technique. Now, there may be a little, oh, it may be almost deceiving in a way because it, the recipe doesn't really explain in the nat science detail about taking a thing of water and pour, uh, sparging, rinsing. It, that, it is going to absorb a lot of water. And when those grains absorb, if you start here and you've got this much water and you fill it, and your grains come up to here and it soaks up all of that water, when you pull those grains out, you've got this much water. I realize that. Let it drain and then use either this or use fresh hot water. Um, it, we do what we call sparging. Now, I don't care if you call this a mash, a must, a wart, a wash. It's all the same thing. Fermentable sugars. That's at the end of the day, what it is. So um, different communities have different names for different things. Again, I've said this a hundred times that uh, each one of our communities, if you're a beer brewer, you have your own language. If you're a winemaker, you have your own language. If you're a whiskey maker, you have your own language. But they're all the same. And believe it or not, the process 
all the way up into bottling or separation is exactly the same. And in some cases, it may be just a little bit different for some of your specialty wines, okay? I just want, or you know, barley wines, you know, Trappist beers, things like that. It's, let's, let's just leave that alone for right now. But once that happens, and you, you only got maybe three gallons left. It, I understand that. All, those, all that water is still in those grains. Now, all of that conversion is taking place if you've done everything else correctly. Uh, you've got to raise these grains somehow and suspend them up here and then pour water in. Now, how you do that, again, there's a, there's a thousand techniques for it. You can just pour it right in the top. Yeah, but, uh, you know, some way if you could put a screen on top and diffuse it and let it leach through all of the grain, yeah, that, that's helpful. Um, how long do you do that? You, you do that until it's done. Um, come on. Work with me here. Um, and you want to leach out all of those fermentable sugars that you've got left in the grain that soaked up all of that water. Now, is there something else you can use to help you with that? Absolutely. Oh, let me share this with you. Now, this is not an absolute necessity. This is called, these are called rice holes, okay? And these are the shells of rice. Um, it, gosh, they're, they're dirt cheap. Dirt cheap. Just please go online. Don't, don't ask me to send you a link. Just go online and search rice holes, H-U-L-L-S. Uh, what these do is if you put a bag of these in with, and this is probably about a half a pound, if, if you put a bag of these in with all your grains, what that does is it, it, it gets in the middle of your grains and it keeps them separated so they don't stick together. So it makes sparging a little bit easier. You know, it's, it's sort of like, it, now it's going to build a little bit more volume in your grain bed, but if you can address that, well, it's, it is helpful, yes. But is it absolutely necessary? No, please don't go out and think that you have to have rice holes. It's just another, what? Yep, technique. Mm. You see where we're going with this? So much to do, so much to learn. Really not learn, it's just review because the processes are very simple steps. It's just how you get at those steps. All right, I said enough about that. Um, I, we talked about the George Washington rye recipe and, and how you can overcome that. Uh, please work with that. Uh, that's a wonderful recipe and we make that every time I make that. It lasts a very, a very, very short time. Uh, today I'm gonna make several different mashes because I'm, what I'm gonna do is blend them together. Now, as a general rule, I'll use this side. As a general rule, uh, any of the literature that you find, that you read, they'll tell you it's like two pounds of grain per gallon. Okay, so it's two pounds per gallon. Uh, and those of you in Europe, please just do the conversion for yourself. Thanks. Um, I am more apt to reduce that because I like having more water than I do the grain because I find it easier for me to work with. Now you may have no problem with this two pounds per gallon. It, it, it may work perfect for you. Now when it comes to sugar, uh, sugar is one of those additives that two pounds per gallon is great uh, because you're not, it all melts or liquefies. Uh, but when we talk about grains, you know, you're going to remove those grains at some point because you have to have them gone before you distill. So um, two pounds to me is just a bit overdoing it. I, I tend to use 1.25 pounds or somewhere around that area per gallon, okay? And the reason I do that, like I said, I have a little bit more water to work with Plus, if I'm using that water to sparge with, now this is a technique, not a must. I'm gonna clean this off and be right with you. Wow, that was quick. See, one technique for sparging is to take your container, well, whatever it is, your kettle that you're cooking in. We call it cooking because we're not, yeah, we're cooking. <laughs> we're cooking, we're gonna hydrolyze everything. You know, we're gonna bring it up to the right temperature, 180 degrees, give or take. All depending on your recipe, um, you know, and then of course cool it down to 155 for the introduction of amylase to convert starches to fermentable sugars, uh, so on and so forth. 
Um, now, one way of doing this, now, and everybody doesn't have access, I'm going to show you a couple of different methods, um, which are techniques. Uh, but there are those out there who just have buttloads of money. <laughs> Go ahead and spend it. You know, I love you like a brother, but not everybody has a, the big, you know, Oh my goodness! I'm trying. To, I'm trying to think of a couple of names. Uh, they'll come to me, but you know, you've got the grandfather is one in particular that actually heats and pumps. It's got a pump in the bottom, and it pumps your mash back up so that it sparges. So it's a constant sparge. That's one technique, and that's just a small pump that's on the side. Uh, it has to. It, it's a special pump because it's got to. It's, it, it's got to be able to withstand the heat of that mash. Um, and what it does is it pumps it straight back up at top, and it pumps it right back down into the center. And then they, they've got a, in the grandfather, they have a screen that goes across here, the diffuser. And it allows that water to drip right back down. So this mash is constantly, and there's an offset down here. So the grains are never at the bottom of the grandfather itself. And uh, what it does is it, it drips all the way back through, and there's a constant exchange of this volume here back up to this volume so these are are constantly running it's very very efficient now we want to try to mimic that in a way and there's a couple of different ways to do that this is probably the most efficient way but all of us don't have access to that but what do we have access to we have access to our standard kettles and I'll show you that um, um, I have and you're aware of this you know I've got this here's this is actually the grandfather um, a brewing kettle and this is for making a mash or doing a bunch of different things but not necessarily distilling it's just for kind of making a mash this is nothing more than the base of a turbo 500 I just take the column off and I'm going to use this as my source of my heat source and my kettle for making a mash and then I've got this large one back here that I'm gonna put on a new wave cooktop and it's got a screen, I'll show you that, it's got the basket inside and we'll use that for the same thing. But we're going to do it three different ways. And, and here's how we're going to do this. The magic erase first. Here's how we're going to do this, okay? I've got the very large pot and that's got a colander inside and it's got legs on it. And the standoff is out oh, probably about two inches, which is sufficient. Um, but the problem is, is that this particular one there has no spout. So what, what have I got to do? Uh, it, well, it's, there's, uh, for, somehow I got to get this out. So I'll, once I'm finished with the cook, I'm going to raise this and it will set up here. And then I'll siphon some of that mash off and I'll reintroduce that back in here. I'll just put a screen on top as a diffuser and, and do that. And I'll do that several times. Now that's fairly efficient. That's pretty doggone efficient. Um, it it's, doesn't work as well as you know the regular standard grandfather but that sucker's like almost 800, 900 bucks. The other method or technique that we're going to use is I have actually that grandfather cooker and that one has a spout right here and you know that from the last video you saw I made a strainer that goes inside fits perfectly inside the center and I've got what about a half inch of offset on the bottom so that's going to be a little bit less of an offset but with this curved side I've increased that offset around here hmm. just follow along that goes inside here see it drops all the way down to the bottom that way the grains never set on the bottom it never turns it off because it has a sensor in there if that happens they never scorch and I'm able to draw the water off or the mash and reintroduce it simple as that so I'm going to use that method um, now, the intent of this is all to find out, I mean, they're all about the same, but of course, one's going to be a little bit more efficient than the other, you know, just as your technique may be more efficient for you. And that's quite all right. You don't have to do it this way. Just please, 
don't violate the process. Uh, your technique, the way you go about it is totally up to you, but just follow the process. All right, and that is, you know, water, temperature, uh, time, you know, those things that are important that just that make it happen. Now, the last one we're going to do is um, I'm going to use that T500 without the column, okay? Now, it also has a spigot. Oh, that's going to come in handy because what we're going to do with this one is, and I'll show you this, I'm going to fashion another one of these screens or strainers to fit inside. Uh, but I'm going to add a screen on top of it. So my standoff will be about five inches. Now what that's going to allow me to do is set that basket in here. Whoops. Set that basket in here with a screen across the top of it. And that's where my grain bed will be. My grain bed will be up here, and I'll have all this room for these for my sparge water to run through it. How am I going to get there? I'm going to open up this petcock, and I'm going to reintroduce that back in here. Now, how many times do we have to do that? Um, you know, I've covered this. It, you know, people ask a lot of times, George, how long I got to let this thing ferment? Well, I don't want to be a smart aleck, but let it go until it's done. Um, and the same thing here. I'm just, I'm just going to keep reintroducing that. What is it, three times? What is it, eight times? Is it two times? Uh, you'll know because you'll all of a sudden you'll see your grain start to loosen up and get light. All those sugars are gone out of that. At the very end, in all three of these cases, we are going to raise that grain bed just enough to pour our final bit of water back in there, which that, this is a beautiful thing. Stop and think of it. You know that grain, in every one of these cases, that grain's gonna soak up a certain amount of moisture, even if I'm recirculating it. But at the very end, it's gonna retain some of that. So I'm wind up with less volume here than I anticipated, or than I wanted, or that I started with. So how am I going to change that? I'm going to increase that volume by using warm water, that's clear, just to do my final rinse. So not a beautiful thing. Uh, and it, believe it or not, it is really that simple and that direct. So that's what we're going to do. Now, for those of you who missed all of this video and you go right to the next one because you just can't wait to get there, yep, you're going to miss some real basics and you're going to start asking questions about what I just covered. Okay, I, all right, I'm, I'll answer them, don't worry. But if you watch the video all the way through, you don't know how many times I get a comment or a, an, an email about a video, and then a couple minutes later I'll get a, oops, sorry, I just saw that on, you know, further into the video. Yeah, you're right, we'll, we'll cover it, just give us a chance to get there, okay? So, now, let's close this out, and we're going to move to the next part. And the next part is our preparation for what I'm going to do. I just want to show you that. Um, I'm, I'm going to show you how I, how I make this screen for the next one. And then we'll cut that one short enough to where when you come back, we'll have water in there. We'll have the grains all ready. What, you know, all that stuff so that we can get right to the heart. Get right to the meat of what we're going to do today. What do you think? Oh, yeah. I'm with you. Hey, happy, you know, happy distilling, but don't go far. Merry Christmas. <laughs>